picture this. You own a kindergarten. You have chosen to franchise it and now have 10 branches based in different states. Given that you cannot be in all 10 places at once, would you not like to set them up with the same documented rules and guidelines to make certain that they all run in the same manner? This will make sure managers know what is expected from them. Customers know what they are getting in terms of value for money. And consistency and peace of mind is what you can offer customers who may move between branches. This encourages brand loyalty and makes your job of managing all branches so much easier. In the same way, shareholders or investors want to know that companies listed on their ASX are subject to the same guidelines and any deviations from these are disclosed. The question now becomes, if I'm an investor, what questions do I want to answer it before I make the investment? And this is where our eight broad principles come in. There are eight core ASX principles. Let's go through some practical recommendations for each of these. To have solid foundations in place for management and oversight means that there should be a clear documented description of the different roles and responsibilities that directors of the board and management must perform. Information should also be disclosed to owners and the public. The organization must also have systems in place to monitor and evaluate those people. So if they fail to do their job properly, this should become clear and obvious and appropriate action should be taken. There should also be careful checks taken before appointing someone to a senior position, such as the director of the organization. There should be gender diversity within the organization and in the setup of the board. Having the right board structure means getting the right people with all the right skills and abilities into the available positions. We need to avoid just stacking a board with friends or compliant yes people who do not bring any skill or value. The board should also have some independent people who can bring an objective viewpoint to all discussions. And for a listed company, the majority of the board should be independent. Finding the right people should be done in a formal manner and a special subcommittee of the board, called the Nomination Committee, should be used to find and approach the right people. To make certain a committee is independent, it cannot be chaired by the CEO. The people in the organization should go beyond just complying with the law and make sure that they are good corporate citizens by acting lawfully, ethically and responsibly. To formalize this type of behavior, listed companies are expected to have a code of conduct and a whistleblower policy to guide ethical behavior and indicate what activity is not acceptable or permitted. There is a lot of pressure on businesses to present results in a positive manner. Incentives to achieve bonuses, increase the share price and receive greater status and reputation can lead people to attempt to publish inaccurate results. We need to ensure there are procedures in place to protect the integrity and accuracy of our corporate reports. Internal controls are a powerful tool for making sure this occurs. Having a board subcommittee called the Audit Committee, whose focus is on verifying corporate reporting, is essential for listed companies. To make sure everyone is up to date, good governance requires the prompt, accurate, continuous and balanced disclosure of results and information. Here the balance refers to the reporting of both positive and negative information. Owners of shareholders deserve to be treated with respect. Directors of the organization should not make decisions or pursue action that makes it difficult for owners to understand what is going on or to have their voice heard, such as voting at the annual general meeting. This links closely with having integrity in corporate reporting and with timely disclosure. Understanding and controlling risk is a critical part of achieving an organization's objectives. To help with this and to make sure it is done in a systematic manner, there should be a board subcommittee that focuses on risk. The organization should apply a disciplined risk management framework that identifies potential risks, including those to the environment, classifies the severity and likelihood of these risks, and puts in place action to eliminate the risk or reduce the chance of it occurring. This framework should be reviewed at least annually and updated as needed. Disclosure of significant risks should also occur so that the stakeholders are properly informed. Lastly, paying people fairly is not just about making sure that they are paid enough. 
For lower level employees, there's often debate about what the minimum wage should be. But avoiding paying people too much is just as important. Directors may be tempted to overpay managers if they have a close relationship with them because they are in control of large organizations and have access to large amounts of money. An organization also wants to attract the correct people as employees with the correct skills and experience. Therefore, remuneration also needs to match industry standards. Procedures need to be put in place to prevent over or underpayment from occurring and linking pay to outcomes. An independent remuneration subcommittee should be established, which looks at these issues in an objective manner. Salaries or remuneration should be disclosed to ensure transparency. To recap, the ASX principles and recommendations offer principles and recommendations for listed organizations to consider and comply with. Compliance with these principles of good governance requires significant thought and effort, as well as disciplined systems, internal controls and reporting processes.